What makes Optimum Nutrition Amino Energy a great anytime energy and muscle recovery product? You're looking at it. Drink it anytime throughout the day. Tastes great, mixes well. This will keep you sharp. All the aminos I need, all the energy I need. Slow down. Speed up to reach seven kilometers per hour. Hello, everybody. My name is Julian, and I have Shirling with me. Welcome to a brand new episode of Fitness at Home series, where we bring you your favorite group fitness class. And today we're gonna be doing gentle flow. All right, let's begin. I want you to. You can choose to step hip width apart, or you can put your feet together. It really depends on your comfort. All right. So place your palms together right in the center of your. Heart and chest. Close your eyes. I just want you to feel the calmness that just sweep all over you right now. Take a huge breath in. Take a huge breath out. Inhale one more time. Allow your mind to settle. And exhale. Release all the tense muscle. Can we do just one last time? Take your own time. And very gently open your eyes on the exhale. Let's take a huge breath in. Circle the arms high up. You use your heels, push it down. If it feels good to look up, go ahead. Exhale, come back to the front chest again. Inhale again. Let's begin right now, yeah? Exhale, bend a lot of your knees, have your hands just touch down next to your feet. Take your right foot, steps back, front knee bend at the right angle. You want your heels to be pushing back, so that helps to stretch you out a lot. Palms on the ground, ground that hands, bring all your weights to the back where the heels are, and you're looking at them, so you know where you're going with your weights. Take a huge breathe in, roll the entire body forward, Lock your midsection so tight that when you come down, your arms feel so light on the exhale. If you need to, you can put your knees on the ground because it's a gentle class. So take a huge breath, inhale. Do a baby version on the first one. Tuck the toes. Let's remove the back, butt back up. Press the heels. Stretch your arms so long, something happens right on the inside. Bend the knees. Bring the right foot next to your right hand. Take a huge breath in and exhale. Let your whole body just drink. If you can't do this, you can actually put your elbows on top of your knees. It will be just as good. Take a huge breath in. Standing all the way up. And exhale, hands to your heart center. Now really up to you whether you want to put your feet together or uh, apart. Take a huge breath in again, round two. Exhale, lots of knee bend. If you find your back is rather stiff today. All right, left leg steps back, front knee at 90 degree. Lift the chin and jaw so you feel like you have a lot of space. Palms on ground, push the down dog. Inhale, hear yourself breathing in. Let your whole entire chest align on the fingers. And on the exhale, keep the body really soft and straight, lower halfway. If you can handle this, halfway up in the air. Inhale, rise up, upward dog. If that feels good, you can tuck your toes and move your whole weight forward. If you don't like it, perfectly fine to rest your knee on the ground. Tuck the toes, exhale, come back to down dog. Bend into the knee again, left foot, spring forward. Land really softly. And on the exhale again, feet come together or apart. Entirely up to you. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands the heart center. Breathe in again. We're going to create a bit more variation of the same move, all right? So it keeps you interested. Hands to ground. Take your right leg steps back. Find me at 90 degree. And today, because we're focusing on hamstring, so we're going to just straighten out the front leg and let your head drop all the way to the knees. If you can't do that, keep your body up. That's fine. Bend into the knee. Inhale. Chin lift. Chest up. Palms to ground. Bring back to down dog again. Good. Breathe in. Come forward. This time you want to be stronger than the first few rounds. So go on tap, tiptoe, exhale, lower half foot. 
in your scoop it up. Feel the lightness when you breathe in. On the exhale, feel the relaxedness when you're actually coming upside down. Bend to the knees, right foot steps out. Good. Take a huge breath in again. On the exhale, straighten out the leg, lift your butt high and back. If you can, drop your head. If you can't, stay up. One knee, 90 degree. Breathe in again so that you can feel like you're still breathing quite comfortably. Feet together or hip width. Drop the head. Let the body just follow the lead of your arms. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands the heart center. Let's do our very last one. Inhale, rise again. Exhale. I just want you to hear yourself. Take a deep breath in, left leg step back. Take a deep breath out, exhale, straighten out the right leg. Drop your weight forward if that feels good. Inhale, find the 90 degree. Exhale, palm again. Do a strong push back, all weight resting on the heels behind. Inhale, rise, move forward. From plank, gently exhale, hover if you can. If you can't, perfectly okay every time. You put your knee on ground. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, press back. Down dog. Good. Bend to the knees. Left foot. Step it forward. Land it really soft. Again, in one breath. Exhale. Inhale, lower the butt. Lift the heart. Exhale, feet together. Drop your head down. Breathe in to rise again. Exhale, hands on Jali Mutra. Close your eyes. Allow yourself to breathe and let the palpitation of your heart settle a few stop softer. One more deep breath. And as you exhale, you're going to take a hand up again, open your eyes, inhale, lift up. As you exhale, please fold forward, bring your hands by the side of your little toes. Please bend your knees a lot so you may rest your belly on your thighs. And now walk both your hands to the front of your toes. Allow your feet to open just slightly wider apart for more support. Take both hands, flip your palm to face the sole of your feet. Insert your hands underneath your feet. Take note that your toes are stepping on your wrist as it gives you a stretch on your forearm as well. Gently straighten both your legs by lifting your tailbone in the sky. If you are quite flexible, think about pulling against your ribs and pushing it into the ceiling as well. Try to relax your head and your neck. Now gently bend both the knees. We're going to do that one more time. Take a deep breath in and as you exhale, straighten both your legs, tailbone to the sky, flexible, roll the ribs up. Once again, bend your knees, slowly take both hands out, place them by the side of your little toes. Step your right foot all the way back, coming into a low lunge position. Keep your chin up. Now put the back knee on the block. Now push your bum back, lift your front toes up and come into a half mountain. While you're here, take note that your toes are lifted, bums pushing back, both hips even. Let's come forward, place your foot down, bend your front knee 90 degree and let's do that again. Push bum back, toes up, legs straight. If you find that this is rather challenging, Consider using the blocks here to give your chest a little more height. Now once again, bend your knee, come forward, place your hands back to the front of your mat, pick the back knee up, step back to your downward facing dog. Shift your weight forward slowly like we did in sun salutation, put your knees on the floor as an option, lower the body halfway or all the way down, Slide forward, chest up into a full up dog and gently press back into your downward facing dog. Take your right foot, step it to the inside or the outside of your fingers, whichever you're comfortable with. 
other foot does the same thing. Once again, roll yourself arms up all the way to the top. And then once again, fold yourself back down again, forward fold. This time, stepping your left foot all the way back, place the back knee onto the floor. We're going to go into our half monkey again. So pushing bum back, lifting toes up. As you can see from Julian's foot, all his toes are pointing up to the ceiling, pushing the bum back and trying to keep the leg as straight as possible. Once again, come forward. Let's reset that position for a deeper stretch. Push it all the way back. Toes up, bum back, leg straight. Remind you once more of your option with the block to keep the chest lifted for a bigger breath. If you're more flexible, hit to shin. Now, coming forward again. Place, replace your hands, tuck in your toes. Come back up into that downward facing dog on your out breath. As you inhale, slide forward into a plank. Knees down as an option always. All the way down or halfway down, you decide. Slide yourself up into a full up dog, opening your front body. And then pushing back gently into your downward dog. Step your left foot to the outside or the inside of your hand. The other one comes forward. Roll yourselves all the way up. And step in if your feet were wide. Now bring your hands down to your heart center. Take a couple of breaths here. Feel your hamstring. Let's go again. Inhale, reach up. And pull yourselves all the way down. Please take your right foot all the way back. Now, turning the back heel down into a warrior two position. I'm going to bring in the block as an option for you today, especially if you know your hamstrings are pretty tight. So placing the block on the inside of your front foot, yeah, having the hand grabbing, we call this a level two, so it gives you a lot of um, support and height. Taking your left hand, you can put it on the hip, or you can take it up into the ceiling, up to you. Now gently straighten your front leg coming into a triangle pose. So remember, in order for you to be aligned, you've got to push that bum forward just a little bit, leaning the body back. You can choose to turn your head down in front of you or into the ceiling. Now, please bend the front knee again. Come down, back. One more time into that triangle pose. Straighten the leg. This time, see if you can go a little deeper, digging your front heel into the mat. Feeling the stretch on your inner thigh and your hamstring as Julian was showing you. Now, bend the front knee again. Top hand comes down to the floor. A little challenge for... Um, gentle flow i think let's try a reverse triangle <laughs> take the block to the place where you would have placed the other foot please turn your back foot 45 degrees and maybe step it out towards the right side just a little bit more all right when you're ready turning the hip facing the front release your other arm back into the sky coming into a reverse triangle here once again, you want to make sure that your body weight is firmly distributed between your front and your back foot. Take a couple of breaths here, feel the twist, and really preparing the body for what comes next. Take the top hand back down onto the floor, please. Remove the block. Bend your front knee. Pick up that heel at the back. Please step back into your downward facing dog. Now, let's step your right foot to the outside of your right little finger. We're going to go on to the other side. Once again, bring in that block if you need to. All right. And of course, for option, you already got Julian on the block. I'm just going to show you if you are not so gentle. <laughs> you can actually try this, okay? So place the back foot down. Remember, your feet, they are in a warrior two position. So same thing. Feel free to put your free hand on your hip or taking it up into the sky. A few things to note, chest needs to open, hip pushes forward, so the body is fully aligned as though you're against a wall. 
and then straighten the front leg when you're ready to go into that triangle pose. Make sure that you're breathing into the areas that you're stretching, which is your inner thigh and your hamstring. Please, once again, bend that front knee. One more time, straighten into that triangle. Give yourself a deeper feel. Now, very slowly, let's release that hand on the floor. Bend that front knee 90 degree. And reverse triangle as we would. Again, I'm going to just do it uh, without the block while Julian is on that. You may step your back foot just out a little bit, turning it slightly forward so the hip can turn to the front. Alright, and then when you're ready, we want to turn the body to a reverse triangle. Once your leg is ready, you may straighten that front foot. So once again, we remind you that you may look down to the side or to the top depending on what comfort you feel in your neck today. Because every day we feel just a little different. Again, breathing into the ribs, feel the twist and the hamstring stretch on that front leg. Remember, body weight distributed evenly between both your feet. When you're ready, let's place the hand back down onto the floor. Bend your front knee 90 degree, pick up that heel at the back, let's step back into the downward dog. Now, what is gentle flow without a child's pose, right? Please put your knees on the floor. Come into child's pose. <laughs> My member's favourite pose. Take a couple of breaths here as you rest. No tension in your shoulder, no tension in your belly. Allow yourself to really breathe and embrace this moment. Now, once you're ready, please pop yourselves up. Come into a seated position. Ah. So, have your legs crossed. Let's give you a little bit of release because we will be coming forward quite a lot. Let's take both your arms up. Now, if you find that sitting cross-legged is really difficult for you, I believe you can actually feel free to sit on the block. But when we come forward, you might want to just be very careful not to go too far forward and then roll over. <laughs> roll over. <laughs> Alright, so again, feel free to relax. As you take a couple of breaths here, just observe what's happening around your back. And very slowly, you're going to roll yourself up as you drag your hands in and come into a seated position. So if you actually have a block under your hip, you might want to remove it and place it on the side. We want to be grounded for the next stretch. Take a leg straight out to the front, please. Okay, cool. So keep the chest up. Extend your hands onto your shin. This would be your option if you're quite tight in your hamstring. So you decide which level works for you. On the shin, holding the ankle, grabbing the feet, and if you're flexible, holding the block. <laughs> okay, so there are different levels for you to go to. You, no peer pressure here. So you do at your limit what you can, yeah? So again, observing yourself, taking a couple of breaths, and really if you are right here and you find that your back is slightly rounded, I would suggest that you keep that chest up rather than rounding it just to get to the toes, yeah? Good. So a couple of deep breaths here. Again, breathing into the ribs. So you feel the expansion on the ribs on the side and the front and back. Now, very slowly, please roll yourself up. Okay, let's give you another stretch. This one targets a little bit more on the hamstrings and the inner thigh. So please bring your right foot in. Yeah, listen to this. Very particular about where we put the foot. So um, we want to bring that right foot right to the inner thigh of your left. 
and then turn the right hip up. So if I were to take a photo of you from the top, you look like you have an L shape. Yeah. So keep that chest up. You should be facing a 45 diagonal right now. If you are, yay! You may place your hands on the floor and start to come forward as far as you can go. The further you go, the more you feel that inner thigh stretch. But double check, are your toes still facing the top? There you go. <laughs> so as you are here, you may go all the way down to the floor if that is where you are today. The one thing you want to take note of that you don't want to do is in order for you to come forward, your bum comes up really high. Now that would be a no-no. So keep the bum as close to the floor as possible. Then come forward. Now very slowly, please. Come on up. Good news. We have two legs. Let's switch sides. Come to the front. Let's switch it over to the other side. So always reset yourself before you pull the foot to the inner thigh and turn the hip so you can create the same L shape on the other side. Once again, you're facing a diagonal, toes lifting, chest lifted and coming forward as far as you can go. So once again, just reminding you of your breath. The one thing that we tend to forget as we uh, move is we forget to breathe. So please breathe and make sure that you're not holding your breath at any point. Your breath is what keeps you living in the moment and being aware of it is what keeps you in the present. Just a quick reminder that your bum is still close to the floor and toes are still pointing up. Then very slowly, please walk yourselves back up. Good. Coming to the front. Let's reset the leg again. <laughs> now put your feet together. Okay. Now I'm going to let you decide how near you want to bring your heels to the groin. If you find that pulling it in, you're not lifting your knees very high, then go ahead and pull it in. If not, I actually find it more comfortable taking it a little bigger in that diamond and then coming forward as far as I can go. Feel free to place your elbows onto your legs but please do not bounce at this moment or you can come all the way down to the floor as far forward as you can. Once again, allow your head to relax, drop it down towards your feet. Fun fact, do you know what pose this is called for little children when uh, we teach them yoga? It's called smell your feet pose. <laughs> Legit, I teach kids yoga. <laughs> Alright, but of course for adult, we call it the butterfly pose. All right, now please slowly roll yourselves up. <laughs> Shall we go into our final pig pose for today? <laughs> okay, now please open your feet out to the side. You can feel free to just simply open it. But if you find that the heel on the bony parts is a little bit difficult on the floor, I would suggest that you keep yourself within the mat and open up as wide as possible. And as you can see, that's what we have done. We want to first keep your chest up. Now in yoga, it's not about getting into the final pig pose um, being the most important part. It's knowing your levels and knowing your limits. So I'm going to bring you down step by step right now. Keeping your toes up being the main principle, please roll your hip back as much as you can. If you find that you have difficulty rolling the hip back, Maybe you are more comfortable with your hands here and just lifting the chest. This you will probably feel a lot if you have a tight hamstring and inner thigh. For those of us who are ready to upgrade a level, I think Julian is ready. You can bring the hands in front of your uh, body, okay? And then you can take one step forward. Just take note that your toes are still facing the top, all right? Now, if you find that you're there thinking and looking in the screen and say screaming give me more let's go <laughs> one more step forward now just a word of caution here you may go as far as you go but the thing i want you to take note of is that your back is flat if you come here and your back is rounded then i would rather you are here okay 
And then finally, if you can go all the way down, Julie and I are going to show you. Let's go. <laughs> all the way to the floor, if you may. All right. Make sure you sanitize the floor. You did. Okay, and keep your face down if you can. Uh, I don't really suggest anyone doing this pose to be turning their heads to the side like this uh, because it's more of a neutral pose. So we want to keep the head just down and relaxing our shoulders. So you should feel a lot of stretch for your inner thigh and your hamstring right now. And very slowly, after a couple more breaths, you may stay there for a bit longer if you like. Then very slowly, please walk yourselves up one step at a time. Okay, bend your knees. Close your legs. You may do it very slowly because, ouch, it hurts. Now, coming to the front. Keep your knees bent, let's close up. All right. Have your hands to the back, keep your chest up and open. Knees are bent, heels are pretty close to your hip. Now, cross your right thigh on top of your left. Yeah. And turn both your knees down towards the right side. Now, getting the knees onto the floor is not the key point, but it's the crossing of the leg that's important. So, turn your chest and have a little bit of twist as well after that forward fold. It might give you some comfort. And then bring it back to the center. Switch it over to the other side. Alright, so notice that we're actually crossing thigh on top on thigh. Alright, and then twist it down. Turn your chest to the opposite direction. So once again, the knees, whether or not they touch the floor, it doesn't really matter. But you may want to keep your elbows bent so you're quite supported. And very slowly come back to the center. Great. Let's have our legs crossed. Let's take a couple of breaths here so we can calm ourselves down and really observe how our body is feeling at the end of the practice. Place your hands on your ribs if you can. If you're unable to, you can keep them on your thigh. Take a deep breath in. And feel the expansion of your ribs, sides, left and right, front and back. When we practice breathing, it's something that comes from within. an observation of your breath at this moment and where you're pushing the air. Try to keep your shoulder relaxed, no tension. Also no tension in the back. Let's do that one more time. If you have your eyes closed, keep them closed. If your eyes were open, please close them for a moment. Now observe the body. See if you feel lighter and more comfortable seated with your legs crossed compared to the beginning of the class. Very slowly, please open your eyes as we mark the end of the session today. Namaste. <laughs> please stay clean. Stay hygienic, wash your hands, and don't touch your face. See you on the next episode.